It's Wednesday, which means it's time for First Look, our unboxing series where we take a look at just something new that's popped up on our radars that might be interesting, that might go somewhere. Of course, it might not, but it might pique your interest. And today we're taking a look at JPEG. I wonder if you can tell what this is all about. Now, take a step back here. NFTs, I don't think they're an asset class. I believe they're a layer that sits on top of other stuff. I believe DeFi is an engine. NFTs are the coach work that sits on top and the metaverse is the place that you go and drive all that stuff. That's my personal map of how I look at this space. But there is no doubt that NFTs and DeFi are merging in serious, serious ways. And we've looked at treasure, we've looked at things like the Subdux Vault token, but here we have something kind of unusual, but kind of expected as well. What it is, is an NFDP. What is an NFDP? Well, you're going to find out right after this message from our sponsors. Don't let high gas costs keep you out of Ethereum. A balance of the gas-optimized Vault architecture makes trading cheaper than anywhere else. Liquidity providers can optimize their fee earnings using the dynamic fee system that automatically adjusts to market conditions. You can also use asset managers to lend out idle assets, dramatically increasing your capital efficiency. And because Balancer is an open platform for flexible, automated markets, you can choose from stable pools or weighted pools, and in the future, more designs will be created that we don't even know about yet. Check it out at balancer.fi. So of course, leaving you on that pathetic little cliffhanger, we want to come back to NFDPs. NFDPs are non-fungible debt positions. Now you've probably heard of collateralized debt positions from the likes of MakerDAO. Here's a lending protocol where you can use an NFT as collateral. It's basically that. So what JPEGs are allowing you to do is to use your CryptoPunk as collateral to take out a loan. Now there's been a few different uh, versions of this idea um, that we've seen. But this one has a few different components to it that I think are worth digging into. Firstly, when you take out the loan, you will be issued a synthetic stablecoin called PUSD, or as they say, it's pronounced PUSD. Yeah, PUSD. Yeah, yeah, try having that conversation with your accountant. Yeah, no, it's, uh, I just took out this, uh, this PUSD loan for uh, my CryptoPunk. It's right there, pussy. There's a lot of the, this kind of stuff in this protocol. They're having some fun. But also there's something interesting here as well. So the idea is this. We know that NFTs are highly illiquid. We also know that highly valuable ones like CryptoPunks take a long time to sell. You need a specific type of person to come along and say, yes, I'm going to spend one and a half million dollars on a 24 by 24 pixelated JPEG. There aren't that many of them around. So what a protocol like this allows you to do is extract the liquidity that's built up inside that JPEG and do other stuff with it. Now, what, what you might want to do with it, well, that's up to you. But for instance, you could take that Puss D, convert it into DAI and stake it or you know, put it to use in yield farming or whatever it is that you might decide to do. And it would be recommended that you keep it in stable coins so at least you preserve the underlying value. But you could, of course, go and just buy a bunch of whatever degenerate token you feel like buying at that particular point in time because you're a gambler and that's what you like to do. But of course, if you do that and it all goes wrong, you lose your punk and nobody wants that. So this is all that's doing. It's just extracting liquidity from a highly illiquid asset, but one that has an incredible amount of value locked in it. So what they're saying is that this protocol will allow you to, to do exactly that, lock up JPEGs as collateral. There will be a governance token called JPEG, of course, that will oversee, administer, and change parameters to the protocol. And in the future, they will horizontally expand to all NFTs, and this is the fun bit, including Etherox, Artblocks, Dino Pals, Autoglyphs, Bored Ape Yacht Club, etc., but not penguins, because as they say, those are worthless. Somebody's talking their book there. So clearly, well, any NFT that has any kind of genuine fundamental value, although what that is at this point in time, we don't know. But let's say, for instance, you had a Fidenza or a Ringer in the Artblocks collection, highly prized, highly valuable, but you want to extract some liquidity, this is how you would do it. That was the first Medium post. The second Medium post had more details and it had a look at the U. 
X and UI as well. So here we are, enter JPEG bridging the gap between DeFi and NFTs. And if you've seen 88 miles per hour's uh, design work, it's kind of like that, pixelated, very much in the vibe of JPEGs and NFTs. So here are some of the key points. CryptoPunks holders will deposit their punks as collateral into a vault and be able to mint PUSD. And the DAO would initially seed liquidity for PUSD among a basket of other tokens in order to peg its value as close to a dollar as possible at all times. Now, doesn't that sound sketchy? Now, we know that pegging assets to a dollar is actually quite difficult. And managing that will probably be the biggest challenge that they have. So there's going to be incentives to liquidity providers. So, yeah, basically the same thing that we always see. Um, they need liquidity. You can provide it, get rewarded for that. And presumably that's going to be in the native token JPEG. Now, here's the, the most important bit. How much will you pay for taking out a loan? on your CryptoPunk. So the interest that the launch, so presumably that will go up. The launch, it's gonna be 2% with a 0.5% withdrawal fee. The interest will be constantly accruing. And in order for a punk holder to withdraw his or her collateral, the full debt plus any outstanding accrued interest will need to be paid back. They believe that even though 2% seems like a lot and the withdrawal fee seems like a lot, if you are smart, the value of having that liquidity and the ability to, to do other things with it should far outstrip uh, what you have paid for it. Uh, the all debt positions will allow 32% of the collateral value to be drawn and liquidation will occur if the debt equity ratio is 33% or higher. So you can't, of course, take out you know, one and a half million dollars on a crypto punk because you just can't. Uh, you'll be able to take out 400 grand. That's all. <laughs> Still a lot. Uh, but you'd have to be very, very careful with that that you didn't get liquidated. Uh, we'll talk about how that happens later on. But there's some weird things going on here. So they say aliens will be valued at 4,000 ETH. 4,000 ETH. Apes at 2,000 ETH. And all other punks will be valued at the punk floor. I'm not entirely sure where the punk floor is at the moment, but it's... Uh, it was around 100 ETH, a little above, below, something like that. They say, we recognize that the above figures do not necessarily represent the fair market value these NFTs would receive in the market, but they are the maximum amount of collateral we're willing to extend to them at launch. So you have this, you basically have to opt into this accepted agreement about how we value CryptoPunks, because that's the only way they can do it, because all of this value is completely subjective. Uh, so... What else they say? The initial CryptoPunk vault will be capped at 10 million. Here's the fun bit. Chainlink is building its a custom price oracle that will feed the smart contract vault the floor price in ETH. And we are working closely with the Chainlink team. We believe this oracle will set the ground for an on-chain oracle for the punk floor. Now, the way punks are sold is slightly different to the way any other NFT is sold. So I'm curious how they would figure out the floor price for, for instance, a board Ape. Would they just take the feed from OpenSea? Because we know that well, there is wash trading going on and there is, there is some weird stuff. And if there was an ability to influence the oracles adversely and get someone liquidated, well, I don't know. There's some strange things going on here. As they say, we recognize that all other, broad, other punks is a broad term. Uh, and then they say to me, oh yeah, here's the interesting bit. So for instance, if you have a floor punk and your credit limit is set at X, you can increase your credit limit by staking JPEG, the governance token, into a smart contract for a year. And then there's kind of this dance you will do with the DAO to decide whether you should get more because the punk itself is worth more. So as they say, if a user and governance both agree that a tiara punk is worth a million dollars, the user will have to lock up $82,500 worth of JPEG for one year. We believe this puts fundamental value on the governance token, scaling its value with the CryptoPunk market. So I guess there's kind of a, because it's such a niche market, they can have those kind of conversations and figure out what the right value for it is. Liquidations. If a punk exceeds or equals a 33% debt equity ratio, it will be flagged for liquidation. Now, on Maker, when an account gets close to a liquidation, it goes into a, it gets flagged, and then bots can come along and execute that liquidation uh, to keep the protocol safe. That's not gonna happen here. Only the DAO can conduct liquidations. So that DAO may choose to either hold the punks, sell it on a secondary market, or OTC. So you can imagine this scenario. The, 
someone takes out a loan on a punk at a market value, and then the entire crypto punk market just craters, gone, then in that case, you'd be quite happy to give up the punk and keep the cash. It's unlikely to happen, but that's crypto punks. There are other NFTs where I think they may not be quite so resilient, or there's a, there's a good chance that something terrible could happen to them in the whole value craters, in which case this could happen. But I feel like JPEG themselves are taking on quite a lot of risk here. So the final thing is users can elect to purchase insurance for a non-refundable 1% fee on the loan they draw. So if we click on this uh, UI, you can see down here, insured, yes, an insurance fee 1%. So there is some kind of insurance setup they've got going on here as well. That for me feels like just the most important piece of this because we're talking about assets that are, they're pretty damn valuable. And it would take a lot, I think, for one of these owners to be comfortable with locking a CryptoPunk up in a smart contract when we know that smart contracts are vulnerable. There are incredibly smart hackers out there and they will figure out an exploit if there is one to be figured out. So that insurance, I'm curious how they're gonna put that together. But uh, the DAO apparently underwrites all debt and ensures that all outstanding debt plus accrued interest can be repaid by the DAO at all times. So there's a lot of different things being weighed up and balanced here. The tone of the Medium articles is pretty kind of degenerate. It's quite clear that they have a thing against penguins. I wonder why that would be. Uh, but I'm really curious to see how these kind of experiments pan out and what kind of liquidity they can attract to the pool. But again, this is just another way in which non-fungible assets can be given fungible attributes. And I'm curious to see where it's going to go next. So that was our first look, JPEG. They say that there's a token generation event coming out where you'll be able to get hold of the JPEG token itself. Take a look at that, see what you think of it. Take a look at the team. Uh, certainly they're aiming high with CryptoPunks. I can imagine Bored Apes will come next, probably Cool Cats and those blue chip NFT projects, uh, R blocks included. And I think in the not too distant future, I could see myself maybe experimenting with one of these and seeing if I could uh, really bet into NFT Fi, as we're calling it. Exciting stuff. Drop us a comment in the comments box, because that's where you put comments, isn't it? Let us know if you'd like us to take a look at something. We're open to most things, as long as they're DeFi or NFT or Metaverse related. And of course, subscribe if you're not. Drop us a like, ding the bell, get notified, all of that stuff. Get a t-shirt, wear some trousers. Today is a good day for it to rain. I will see you shortly on the next one. Have a good one. Peace.